Father above us, come take the hand. Hi, welcome back to Future Doc, the TV show. I'm Dr. James Biddle. Tonight we're going to talk about allergy alternatives. This is a series of educational lectures on specific health topics. We're presenting integrative medical concepts, uh, how to use these integrative concepts to help you improve your health regarding these specific medical topics. My disclaimer for today is that this is not medical advice. This is general educational material. So if you need medical advice, you should go see a doctor and get medical advice. An allergy is a disorder of the immune system. It's an inappropriate immune response against something that's not really dangerous to you. Of course, our immune system is supposed to react to things that are dangerous to us, but it's also supposed to ignore things that are not dangerous to us. Uh, pollen would be the most common example. If you're not allergic to pollen, you can go out in the field and roll around in the hay, and there's no problem at all. But if you are allergic to pollen and have bad asthma, that same thing could kill you by inducing an asthma attack. So that's just an inappropriate response to something that's really not dangerous to you and does not need to be attacked. Specifically, these are to things in your environment. Uh, and they work by activating your mast cells and basophils, which are white blood cells, which then release histamine. Uh, there's an IgE antibody, which causes a sudden inflammation, and an IgG antibody, which causes a more subacute or chronic inflammation in your body. And we'll talk more about these in the future. Allergy shows up clinically uh, as hay fever, asthma, eczema, hives, food allergies, and also, of course, venom, reaction, venom reactions if you're allergic to bees or wasps. The next slide is a picture of the three main types of antibodies that we have in our body. Uh, the most common is the uh, IgG uh, antibody. Uh, the, that is uh, the one that causes the, the chronic delayed reactions and is our, our, our main way of uh, having surveillance, immune surveillance of our environment. The IgE is the, is the type that causes the immediate reaction where people get anaphylaxis or a sudden runny nose uh, or sometimes even difficulty breathing. Uh, and the IgM is the early part of an infection. Uh, we make IgM when we're early in an infection and fighting off an infection. An allergen is the particular molecule that your antibody is recognizing and attacking. Allergens are usually protein, and they usually have a particular shape. And it's that three-dimensional shape that your IgG or IgE antibodies then recognize and lock onto like a, like a key uh, in, into a lock. And by doing that then, uh, the combination of the allergen and the immunoglobulin, or antibody, then hooks onto your white blood cells and causes them to release their histamine and start this cascade of inflammation in our body. That then shows up in a variety of ways, depending on uh, whether it's an acute or a chronic reaction. If you have food allergies, that will often show up as headaches, fatigue, lethargy or just tiredness, joint pains, abdominal cramps, and even diarrhea and bloating. If you have an inhalant allergy, they'll often show up as sneezing, runny nose, uh, itching and watering of your eyes, fatigue, uh, muscles and joint pains, sinus infections, uh, mouth uh, breathing, meaning not being able to breathe through your nose, but being an obligate mouth breather, nasal congestion, chronic sore throat, post-nasal drip, and uh, especially asthma. And then uh, to venoms, uh, many people get an anaphylactic uh, shock response and uh, even death. And to medications, most people just get a rash uh, type of response. Well, why is this overall talk of, topic about allergies important? Well, according to the Centers for Disease Control, 30 to 40 million Americans have allergies, which is about 15% of the general population. 14 million have asthma, so about half people with allergies are also going to have asthma, and the biggest component of asthma are allergies. I'm not actually going to talk separately too much about asthma tonight, because if you can treat the allergies, for the most part, you can treat the asthma. If you take care of that, then you're fine. Specific risk factors for allergies uh, include genetics. If your family has allergies, you're more likely to get allergies. Uh, there's a condition called the atopic diathesis which includes the three components of allergies, asthma, and eczema. 
And often these will show up in sequence. Uh, for example, a child might have eczema when they're very young, and that might then turn into uh, allergies, and then that might turn into asthma. Sometimes they'll overlap. Uh, we call that drift of symptoms when they kind of go from one to the other. Uh, the next slide shows one study that was published about uh, vaccines increasing the risk of allergies and asthma. In this particular study, uh, those children who were vaccinated had twice the risk of asthma and 1.6 times the risk of allergies than those kids who were not vaccinated with uh, the DTP, which is uh, the diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, uh, uh, or just the tet uh, tetanus vaccine. Like I said, this is an exaggerated immune response to something that doesn't need to be attacked. Usually this occurs after repeated exposure, sometimes only after a first couple of exposures, but never on the first exposure. You have to be exposed at least twice to become allergic to something. The more we're exposed to something, the more likely it is to become allergic. And this becomes very important when we talk about food allergies. Whatever food you're eating the most of, or whatever foods are hidden in your food chain, that's the most likely to become an allergic food. What are the conventional treatments? How do most doctors treat allergies? Well, of course, avoidance is the first thing. If you can avoid what you're allergic to, then avoid it. The next treatment for conventional doctors to use are antihistamines, both over-the-counter and prescription antihistamines. Antihistamines work very well. They just simply keep your white blood cells from releasing that histamine when they get the uh, antigen antibody complex attached to them. But, of course, one of the problems with antihistamines is they make most people feel sedated. And then immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is where you give the patient small quantities of the very same protein allergen that they're reacting negatively to. And by doing that, you teach the immune system not to attack that particular protein. It's called inducing tolerance. I want to review the, the, the conventional um, approach uh, to uh, allergies, and that's the uh, serum. I talked about the, the serum injections earlier. That's using the antigen that you're allergic to and giving you shots. And, of course, the uh, uh, 53 shows the, the downside, the drawbacks to the injections. First is it gives you a yes-no diagnosis, so there's no graded response in order to guide treatment. You have to start at zero, give the lowest dose of the antigens, and gradually increase that as a boosting dose. And when you do that, you have a tiny risk of anaphylaxis. And even though that's very small, it's not zero, and people do die from it occasionally. It's inconvenient to go to the doctor's office every week, and it's expensive at 25 to $50 uh, dollars per shot, which is over $1,000 uh, per year. And it's also painful, of course, to stick a needle in somebody all the time. Other supplements which can help allergies is MSM. MSM is classically used for arthritis. Uh, it's used in race horses and race dogs uh, to keep them from having sore muscles after their events. Uh, but it also has a very powerful antihistamine effect. And you can take huge doses. There's really no toxic dose of MSM. Uh, most people take 1,000 milligrams twice a day, but you can usually take five or 10,000 milligrams twice a day also. And that can do wonders uh, for your allergies and also give you uh, wonderfully soft skin. And then you can make homeopathy to uh, what you're allergic to. Uh, you can, uh, if you're allergic to pollen, you can, you can go to a natural pharmacy and uh, buy a homeopathic remedy against pollen or mold or whatever it is that you're reacting to and, and uh, teach your body not to react against those things. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine, which is where I trained in allergy treatment, uh, teaches about oral drop desensitization. This has been published. I have four different articles listed here from conventional medical journals that show that drops under the tongue of the very same antigen extract, or called serum, that the allergists inject into people, you can put in drops under the tongue and treat the allergies. So instead of taking a shot every week, you can just send people home with these little drop, uh, dropper bottles, and then uh, you just take uh, three drops in the morning and three drops in the evening and treat your allergies that way. So these are my drops. I actually haven't used them for a year because I don't have any allergies anymore. It's only been 160 years ago that Western conventional medicine even accepted allergies uh, as, a, as a valid diagnosis, and now it's a, a rising epidemic of 5% per year. What's happened is we've released Pandora's box. We've not only put all these petrochemicals and, and, and solvents uh, into our environment, but we've put huge amounts of toxic metals, especially by, by uh, digging up fossil fuels. And lastly, I want to say that whatever we do to our world, we're doing it to our own bodies, and we're going to be doing it to our descendants.